Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on social media. I'm going to be doing something on the sciences. Metal breathing bacteria. This is where I read an article, mostly from the sciences. Sometimes I do mental health and things like neuroscience. This is an article from Big Think. It's titled, Discovery of Metal Breathing Bacteria Can Change Electronics. Researchers find an unusual property of a bacteria that can breathe metal. By Paul Ratner. As I normally do, I'll put the link to the article in the description. By the way, you can actually listen to the article in the description. It has its own link. Here are some of the points. Scientists discover Shiwanella monodenesis Bacterium can breathe in certain metals and compounds. The bacteria produces a material that can be used to transfer electrons. Applications of finding range from medical devices to new generation of sensors. So these are the type of articles that really get me going. I love thinking about the future and what breakthroughs we'll have. And this seems to be one that will be uh, beneficial to the medical industry and electronics. So I'll start reading now. Researchers discovered an unusual property of bacteria that can breathe in some metal and sulfur compounds and create materials that can improve electronics, energy storage, and medical devices. Specifically, the anaerobic Shiwanella oneidensis bacterium, <laughs> these are always fun to go through, can produce molybdenum disulfide, a material that can transfer electronics as well as graphene explains the press release from Renzela Polytechnic Institute, whose team of engineers carried out the research. You think I could listen to the article first and see how they're pronounced, but that would be too easy. I'll continue. Engineering professor Shyla Sawyer thinks their accomplishment has some serious potential. Once the scientists fully investigate the process involved and learn to control it, one of the possible applications of this finding could be in developing a new generation of nutrient sensors to be used on lakes and other bodies of water to examine the health of their ecosystems. A bacterial biofilm, a collective of the microorganisms, could track excess nutrients in real time, helping address harmful algae growth, or algae growth, and other water issues. Quote, uh, well, Postdoctorate researcher James Rees, who led the study, commented on the implications of their work. In quotes, we find bacteria that are adapted to specific geochemical or biochemical environments can create, in some cases, very interesting and novel materials. Rees shared, "We are trying to bring that into the electrical engineering world." What's unusual about Shawanella oneidensis is that it can create nanowires for transferring electrons, a fact that lends itself to connecting to electronic devices that have already been made, so you're elaborating, calling it the interface between the living world and the man made world that is fascinating. You can check out the new study, which also involved Yuri Gorby as the paper's third author in Biopointer Phases, and there's a link to the article. So. I think this is great. Again, science really um, interests me in all different areas. And something like this could be interesting to see what they can do with batteries, perhaps even the way your body interacts with like things like pacemakers. And now they have all these new um, attachments they put in the brain to help quadriplegics and what about the connections between the spine how nerve endings and that the how it's short-circuited i could see um maybe i'm just going a little crazy i love doing that with science but is it really that hard to believe that we're going to be able to manufacture things like bacteria and these things will have uh, a program to them um, they will have uh, purposes that could be hardwired into them. You hear about this over the years, and I think things are coming to 
um, fruition in a lot of areas. They talk about being real enough to, you know, look, a lot of these articles are title grabbers and some could even be considered clickbaity in some sense. But you'd like to take a realistic look. So what I have done in the past is I will go and watch seminars on some of these topics. And some of them are long, multiple um, videos, hours long. Not particularly in this case, but in some things like evolution, astrophysics, and neuroscience. Um, so you try to like read these things and know that, okay, yeah, well, what's what's potentially going to be the next thing? And I think that's why he tries to talk about the lakes and our ecosystem. And I could see this as uh, just a, you know, they'll find innovative ways to use these things. I think how it elaborates the interface between living world and the man wide world. I wonder where that could actually lead. The article it leads to, I wonder if I would do that as another podcast, but you get more of a, a, a doctor's um, perspective, you know, the more science where you get writers in the field in science and they're not scientists themselves. So the article like this will point to um, where some of the pointers came from. And this leads to uh, really interesting stuff. It could be really boring for some people. I get it, you know, because it's like you're reading about, uh, an, you're reading an abstract and it goes through, um, you know, like procedures they did and how the testing was done. I don't think you can call it peer review. But when you look through these articles, you can judge how um, close in reality they are. I talked about this in some of my other podcasts. So you have, um, you know, neuroscience that we're going to have so many breakthroughs. We're going to cure so many things. And they give it like a one to three year window when it's really like a seven to 11 year window. In any case, reading an article like this gets me thinking. I sometimes go back and uh, reinvestigate things and do a little more of a research on it. I found this title fascinating. Um, you know, just the idea of metal breathing bacteria. You think of all these movies, right? And what we consider life on other planets. I think we, we're still learning, and that's why I love science. Uh, it's the best method we have to determine what's real, regardless of your beliefs. And doing some of these uh, podcasts really gets my brain going, gets me interested in uh, you know the potential of things. I think my favorite... Uh, my favorite school... Um, topic or area was science i loved it i used to pass my test easy and it's like one of the only things i was really good at in school well i guess english or writing whatever but anyway look into do yourself like i said i put the link in the description you'll be able to see the article even hear them do probably a better job than me um describing the article but these are always interesting topics why I like to delve into science once in a while. There's a, you know, a hopefulness you see in it. And hopefully it's a practical, reasonable one. And you, like I said, you can go back, you can do a little more of a deep dive on yourself, you know, yourself, look into the biology or the chemistry. And I hope this gets people interested in science because I love it. I think it's cool. All right, everybody. Be well. Stay safe. My best to you and yours.